whatever. Time is ir- time is irrelevant. Uh, Hello. Except noon, except noon on Thursdays, Laura. Right. I was gonna say I'm in the right place at the right time, so I, that's good. That's pretty good considering that's we're canceling time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty good. Have well, fun. good afternoon. Best of the week. Thanks, Miss Maya. Thanks, Miss Maya. Yes, uh, Laura, we haven't done this in a while. I was gonna say Maya's had some uh, long. Uh, she's being very generous by measuring in week because uh, it's been weeks, uh, for, uh, weeks. close to a month, weeks. but. Yes. I, I think, right? Sure. Yeah, it has. It has been a month. Um, because I remember, <coughs> excuse me, I just inhaled uh, some food because uh, I lost track of time this morning. Um, uh, but yeah, I remember when we were wrapping up uh, episode 17 and we mm-hmm. were like, oh, see you next week. Oh, no, not next week. Oh, see you the week after. Oh, no, not that day nope. either. Well, then, yep. nope, not that day either. And all that happened, and now it's now. Um, yes. Uh, and I was trying to think of all the things that we've done that kept us from doing the live, and we have been all over the place, Laura. Yes. So I don't think we've been live since Iceland. Um, and is that right? Because we did our wrap-up event, uh, our level up, but I don't think we did live yeah, after. Yeah, we were. Yep. Oh, okay. Like, that was 17. Uh, that was before the wrap up level. Got it. Okay. Well, then never mind. But it's been um, it's been a very long time because yeah. of the Fourth of July, the LOL last Fourth of July, um, and LOL. uh, yeah, and various other travels. So it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, so great to be back. Um, mm-hmm. great to be back. Uh, lots going on around here. Um, uh, but, Good. uh, I feel like, uh, we got to start because baseball basically has been keeping us from, uh, doing the lives, uh, because three weeks ago we were in, we went to St. Louis, yes. uh, and we, we saw Cardinals game. We spent a couple of days, uh, in St. Louis and then, uh, it was, yeah, it was the 4th of July and then we went to Milwaukee Mm -hmm. Uh, for more baseball, um, yes, Lisa's exactly right. We just need to come to Cleveland. We do. It's in the plan for the coming year. We will see how the scheduling shakes out. Yeah, it is. Uh, so we've been, we've been doing a Midwestern tour, uh, which has been so nice. Lisa said she'll get us tickets. Well, you're speaking our language, Lisa, as long as you come with us. Uh, that's, that's all we care about. Yeah, for sure. Well, this is, yes, that can, we've concluded our Midwestern tour, um, unless there's like a random Sox game we end up at, but Allison's about to go international with her baseballing, um, in just a few short hours, really, uh, right yeah. now. Yeah, I'm off to, uh, Toronto, uh, tomorrow, uh, and I see, I see Megan, uh, is watching, uh, Megan and I are going to go see, uh, Tigers Blue Jays, yes, uh, yes. tomorrow night, which I'm so excited about, yeah, we yeah. have a great time, I've never and look been at to Megan. Toronto before, and Megan's um, being so polite in the chat, saying that Cleveland is a beautiful city, so Canadian, so, uh, uh, like kind, but yes. yeah, that's exciting that your first trip to Toronto, you've been to Canada before. Yes. 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 yes I have not. I have never been to Canada, which is wild. I, I hope to remedy that. Yeah. Uh, well, when you are from Michigan, uh, it's very, mm-hmm. e- well, it used to be back when I lived in Michigan was, was a long time ago. It was very easy to just accidentally be in Canada. You take a wrong turn in Detroit and they'd be like, what are you doing here? Be like, sorry, I took a wrong turn and I'm on the stupid bridge again, and I couldn't bail out of the bridge. Uh, and so that used to happen all the time. But I, I did go to see Niagara Falls uh, ah. when I was young. Um, and uh, we went to Boston uh, when I was young. We went on a family trip where we went up and over to get to Boston instead of down and under. Um, yeah, Windsor was always a very wrong turn. Um, uh, and yeah, you never really wanted to end up there. Um, so you just turn, turn back around. Uh, but now you could not do that. Um, you, you need a passport now to get to Canada. Yes. You not need a passport. Gotta, they got it. Uh, they can't I, trust us. I don't blame no, them. They cannot. Borders are closed. They don't want mm-hmm. us, which is going to be a problem. 
uh, could potentially be a problem in a few short months. There could be a lot of expats looking to leave the country. Uh, but it is only July. We don't have to worry about that today. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, Kendra's exactly right. Niagara is a Midwesterner's rite of passage. And it's true that the Canada side is better than the American side. So you do have to just like skip over mm. uh, and look at it over there. Uh, so, you know, Laura, I think you got to put that on your bucket list. I Well, I guess so. I mean, this is this is great. This is already planning um, my intro to Canada. I will just I'll do Niagara. Uh, but I've Perfect. always wanted to go to um, to you know, uh, north yeah. of Seattle. Um, but uh, yeah, British Columbia? there it Vancouver. is. Yeah, Vancouver yes. and Vancouver yeah. Island specifically. Sorry, sorry, Canadians. Uh, I just wasn't prepared you for know, all I'm my there. Canada talk. <laughs> <sighs> I kept thinking Victoria, which is different and not what yeah. I meant. Anyway, um, those are different sides of the country. But why not? Uh, why not make it uh, yeah, because I've always, because of Anna Green Gables, wanted to go to PEI as well. So, yes. you know, and I've heard yes. great things. I can't remember who was at the retreat, out one of our retreats, Allison, who was from Quebec City, but she had, she gave me such a sales job on Quebec City about how awesome it is. Um, I don't remember this. I, it was awesome. We were, uh, of course, it's uh, whatever. The memory's not doing great today, but I remember very strongly how awesome her Quebec City stories were. And I was like, cool. It's on the list. So all good. Listen to all the Canada love in the chat. But I think it, it sounds like Toronto um, is another, I mean, since you had the Niagara introduction, um, Toronto is another great like place to place to see. So I, yeah. I feel like that the, the, from the sounds of it, your trip was nice and chill. So I hope uh, you have good things to report when you get back and I'll start planning my trip. I'm sure that I will. I am sure that I will. So yes, very excited about that. Had it headed out tomorrow um, and uh, going to spend a couple of lovely nights uh, in Toronto. Nice to get away. Though I have, um, uh, I have been going on a trip every two weeks uh, since we got back from Iceland, mm -hmm. um, uh, which is an aggressive pace for trips. I agree with that. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's nice to be home for a little bit. Um, but you know, that's, uh, that's okay, because it's all going to be worth it when you get there, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I but yeah, you know, I am the resident dog sitter. So I am also uh, won't be home this weekend, technically either. But I am no. excited to, to spend time with Royal. Oh, there he is. There he is. Poor Royal. He's on the struggle bus. Uh, he got real freaked out by uh, 4th of July, um, and then we had uh, bad storms going through and the sirens going off all the time, so he does not like the outdoors right now. He looks out there, and he gets really excited when you say, do you want to go outside? But then he gets outside, and he's like, I hate this so much. We're going back inside. So I'm not getting my steps either, Laura. Mm. Uh, so that's also a problem. But yeah, so I don't know what you're coming into. Uh, it will be clean. That's all. That's all right. That's all right. We're, yeah. we're willing to, it's, you know, I've learned that flexibility is the key when it comes to your animals and we'll just make it happen. So it's a short weekend. You're taking, it's a really, for travel, it's a short trip. So at least even yeah. though you've been out of town, you have been doing like a good old, like 48 hour special. So it should yeah. be. Yeah, it's, it's nice. be very chill for everybody, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, we'll be checking in, of course. Um, but uh, but yeah, super pumped about that. I will report back. I feel like everyone mm. in Canada is uh, very extremely welcoming and very supportive of their own country, which I really I love. So. You're not really feeling that here in America these days. Uh, so it is nice. Um, and there are people uh, that are, that are, but we're avoiding them. So yes, we are. That's scary. That's get scary. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, Agnes, uh, mentioned in the chat that their baseball stadium, the Rogers center just got an mm -hmm. upgrade. Um, and I'm excited about that because Megan and I have great tickets, uh, because Megan's like a big wig. Uh, yeah. Heard, uh, human, a uh, queen of Toronto. Is that what it was? Yes, that's what it was. She's queen of Toronto. Um, so they let her sit wherever she wants. Uh, so I'm very excited to, uh, that she's allowing me to hang out with her. Um, I can't, uh, can't wait. 
Yeah, can't wait. Golden I'll ticket. That's it. awesome. Yeah, golden ticket. I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, I have not been doing a whole lot of knitting, really. Mm. I was freaking out for a long time, and I just like blasted through my Paul Klee sweater. Um, uh, I blasted through this, and so I finished this, and this was not done. The last, oh, look how beautiful it is. Yeah, it's so, I mean, there's a reason why you were fixated on it, uh, because you have a class, right? And yes. also, it's just too good to stop. Like, it is too good. The pattern did need quite an assist, though, if I recall correctly. Yes, it did. Yes, it yeah. did. And if you are signed up for this class, you will see just how much assist that the pattern uh, needs. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I have already been planning out my little mini uh, Paul Klee that I'll be knitting along with everybody and planning out my uh, Paul Klee colors. Um, that's going to be a Paul McCartney. So I have all these Paul McCartney colors left it's over. So I was going to do like a Paul McCartney, Paul Klee like throw like oh the pauls <laughs> yeah the pauls the paul sweater um so that's what that's what i'm going to be planning on too but yeah there's a uh, actually my materials classes are tonight um, ah. and then the classes start in a month so there's still plenty of time yeah so get up um, in there if you so also can't stop there. looking at that gorgeous yoke it's so beautiful um but yeah travel projects very important at this moment mm -hmm. so i have been hashtag influenced by laura uh yeah. and basically everyone we know uh to knit the bff socks um uh, so this is sock one now this is the yarn uh that i bought when we were in germany in may yes um and then i've got this much of a second one awesome um, yeah so, so good this is, this is my travel project it has been my travel project it's the best like i obviously i agree that it's the best these were travel projects for me in germany and iceland um, just finished those up this week. And then when we went to Milwaukee, I took my second of these socks. This is the same pattern, the BFF sock without the cable. So it goes a little bit faster, um, but it's also a little more boring. So this one, this first sock kicked around a lot longer than this first sock. So there you go. But I was excited to, yeah, I've been in kind of finish mode, which has been great um, with sleep timber on the horizon. Uh, it's still nice to like get things done. And this yarn um, was like the very first yarn that I dyed at our very first natural dyeing retreat. And you can see it's sort of like very subtly striped because it's like ha it's logwood is what makes it purple. And then the stripes are I did half of the skein into indigo. So it's just this really cool and look how vibrant she is. I mean, can you believe? So anyway, I wanted to finish this up because we we have not only a natural dyeing retreat, all right, there we go, natural dyeing retreat coming up uh, in October. We also have an indigo dye studio intensive, just an all day indigo day um, coming up in August. And it would be so great to see you there. Um, so this was, you know, marketing for sure. Uh, similar uh, similar ideas with the Paul Klee, but it's nice to have this done. I wear my me dyed socks a lot. Uh, I have um, a another pair in that color that you've got right that orangey color love her love that. i am going to be joining you because i just have so many of these beautiful skeins that art i just have as art yes. um and they're they should stop being art and they should start being socks um so oh shit. well i think this is avocado with log wood speckles Speckle. yeah Yes, mm -hmm. uh, did this at the National Dying Retreat. Uh, super excited about this. I think that's going to be really nice. And then, Lord knows. Yeah, I, yeah. It's I, I don't have it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's a blend. I think I blended a couple. But look at that beautiful coral. Yeah, so good. I yeah. There is a really vibrant orangey that. color um, that I can't quite remember. That is That is another pair of socks that I have. But it is... Uh, we're doing pretty well from memory and this is why sarah is the instructor um it does look like pumpkin so we'll go with that but yeah it's definitely it's a root of some kind um i oh i see katie popping up matter, matter. that matter. is it yes. katie boom thank you M -A -D -D -R. i knew i knew i had cutch oh. the word cutch is used a lot and i don't even know what cutch does but it stuck in my head 
That's uh, brown. He's brown. brown. Yeah. Does uh, that yeah, matter? It's reading, yeah, it's reading more orange. It looks more corally. Oh, here. I can put it next to my bag. Oh, oh no, yeah. It's just making it really orange. Yeah, orange. That looks really orange. Well, who knows? But I love it. Um, yeah. Angelo Corley. So yeah, so these two are going to be, I'm just, I'm on a sock kick. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, I love these. I love these. And so I too, I'm going to be joining you with some hand dyed socks. Um, I'm going to, that's going to be my um, um, party Olympics project. Love. Too much love. content. I forgot for a second. Um, but, uh, I, that is going to be my party Olympics project. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to knit one sock. I might knit two socks. I might just knit three socks. Um, I love I also, it. I also got this. Yeah. I'm pre wound. I'm ready for the party Olympics, but I got this, um, oh, wow. this like a hedgehog, uh, that, uh, that was late, that was kicking around for a long time. Um, yeah. so I thought these would be really fun too. It's kind of a theme. Yeah. I mean, it's, but great. Like that is just a beautiful palette altogether. Um, you know, I, uh, speaking of knit alongs, like I am so excited for party Olympics to start and to talk about that, uh, in just a minute in our business section. Um, there's another knit along happening here in Chicago, the Crosstown Classic Knit Along that is hosted by the fabulous Grace of Gnome Depot Fiber. And um, one of the yarn shop that I'm currently teaching in, Evans and Stitchworks, head over there to take classes with me, um, is participating and getting their asses kicked. So I, yeah, I can't take it. And I auto enrolled everybody in my classes <laughs> into the Crosstown Classic oh, no. because it's not okay. right. Fourth place. Oh yeah. Oh, by a by a mile. So uh, we we opened up the form. We took pictures. That's, we did a weigh in. Embarrassing. Yeah. That does yeah. We can't can't have that. Now, granted, I am a Chicago girly, but um, I really love that Stitchworks, and I I want to at least help with some numbers. So I have started another sock project, not in the official colorway, but this gorgeous um neighborhood fiber company yarn i've had forever right because with all of our sock talk i was just like i have so much beautiful sock yarn i was doing exactly like allison was doing i was going through all of it but yeah a friend of mine who's not even a knitter you guys a sorority sister of mine just lives in dc and i got this in the mail one day and she was like i went by this yarn shop and i thought of you all of the yarn had neighborhood like dc neighborhood names and i thought it was nice so and she mailed me this skein out of the blue and i was like uh you killed it I freaking nice. love neighborhood fiber company. Yeah. So anyway, so I've cast on um, a scattered pearls from the Hello Sailor sock set by Summer Lee. And it's up. look at it's how so cool. it matches your nails. Yep. Yep. I mean, again, it's like a good palette, right? It's a good palette. Yes. So good even though palette. it won't be up here, it'll be down here. Um, this is what I'm working on this uh, prior to Party Olympics to try to get some numbers up for yeah. stitch works it's really bumming me out and then um but because we were chatting about um party olympics uh we talked how swatching can be done before opening yes. ceremony so i'm swatching away for my orla vest um which is impossible to see on camera but it is this beautiful galaxy color yarn that we got in iceland and the cables are beautiful um and i'm swatching away so that i'm hoping to work on my orla vest um it's knit, i'm gonna knit flat cause for i know there's gonna be a reaction um but uh i'm gonna knit flat so i'm hoping to do one week one front week two back that's that's the goal for the party olympics yeah whoa yeah man whoa that yes. is a big deal Yes, and yes, Amy, it is the Lopi in the Galaxy colorway um, that is um, really hard for me to find in the United States. So when they had bags on bags of it fresh from the factory in Iceland, I said yes. Yeah. I said, I love it. I love yes. it so much. Give me 14 of them right now. That's what I said. Um, uh, I love it. Those are lofty goals. That makes me- They are raise my own goals higher. i think three socks is lofty as hell that's very lofty well and i just i did something stupid too laura uh i made a knit along for the goddamn framed 
from Andrew Listen, Lowry. I think it's time to move on to business because we have a lot of business that we need we these people to get. We want these people to get up in our business. So. Great. Katie's in for frames and it along. Um, so Tamana um, posted, was that just yesterday? It could have been Tuesday, but it was very, very recently as of yes. the time of this taping. Posted that she was in for, for Andre Mowry's Rhinebeck sweater this year, which is like a color work version of Weekender uh, with a boat neck. And she was like, I'm in. She has, I think, since retracted that statement. Um, but uh, then everybody in the chat was being so creative about what they wanted to modify with the sweater, including me. Like, I'm oh, not doing color work backwards, right? I'm not doing it. So I would obviously put in a steak panel for the sleeves. I thought it'd be cute with like a V-neck. Everybody was spitballing, getting so like getting so cute. This morning I woke up and I was like, I'm pretty good. It gets pretty okay. I'm going to slide into vacation mode, right? I'm just going to clean up a few things. I'm going to watch Grandchester, which I just got into. Um, I'm just going to relax and chill. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> and then I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> and then I sat down and was like, just kidding. I'm going to put up a very organized knit along four framed um, because um, uh, I just got so motivated by what everybody was saying and all the, like, the creativity that people were having with their ideas yeah. about it. So I snuck it into my schedule. Uh, it's going to be uh, not aggressively paced because it is in worsen weight, thank God. Um, but uh, with full of modifications. So if you have your eye on frames, like so many of you do have your eye on frames because everybody was kind of talking about it, mm -hmm. um, uh, looking through the stash. So I am going to be using some yarn that Kathy uh, sent me. This is going to be my, um, my like quilt color. Uh, which I thought it's would so be beautiful. so pretty. Yeah. And then I've got this yellow that I thought would be really cute for the top yeah. uh, ribbing. Um, and then I ordered some of Stonehenge Fibers Navy, which is like a blavy, right? It's like the yeah. blackest navy. I ordered so that for the background color. So I think that's going to be really pretty. I don't really like the contrasting ribbing on the bottom or the sleeves. So I'm mixing that. Um, and I'm going to put it up V-neck steak. I'm going to put in sleeve steaks. Um, and so the whole uh, workroom style knit along um, is uh, going to be all about making, it's it's called uh, Framed Your Way. So people mm. are really getting super creative, of course, continuing to be super creative about what they're doing. I'm going to help them every step of the way. Uh, so if you want to blow up your entire plan for the next three months <laughs> of your life, come on over and join my workroom. Uh, and when does that right start? Now. Well, next Sunday. <laughs> because <laughs> mm -hmm. we gotta get moving we gotta yeah. get moving yeah so yeah next sunday morning uh we're gonna kick we're gonna talk about swatching uh we're gonna talk about sizing uh so i just wanted to get it up as soon as yeah. possible so because the majority of that sweater is getting to the armpits right so then it's we're gonna give everybody about three to four weeks to get to the armpits and then we'll talk about all of this well, it's smart because it will be, it, uh, unshockingly, it will be the Rhinebeck sweater. And we will see so many of those sweaters in our feed come October. So it's smart to start now, even if you're on the fence, yeah. joining the work group can still, you'll still have access to a lot of yes. great ideas and tips and tricks and modifications. So you can use it to make your plan when you have time in your schedule. So it's it's really, really smart. Thanks, Laura. Thanks. I could have had my feet up watching Grandchester. Yeah. Uh, instead, I did this. Uh, so, you know, you never know when inspiration is going to strike. And inspiration struck uh, this morning. Yeah. Um, I know everybody in the chat's just like, I can't fucking believe I have to knit this sweater now. I know. Me too. I feel the well, exact same you way. You know what I right? can't believe is that I have a lot 
of worsted weight yarn in variegated colors available at spring resale. Um, so you can also, if you are stressing and haven't quite found the right thing, you can keep an eye on the D-Stash all week this week um, and at spring resale on Instagram and Etsy uh, for all kinds of bargains if you need that one last special skein to make things really pop for your contrast. So there is no reason why you can't have the sweater of your dreams. Just saying. Yeah. Do it. Get on it. Um, so that's what I was working on this morning. Um, on top of, um, uh, yeah, Party Olympics starts next week because the Olympic mm -hmm. opening ceremonies is Friday. July 26th. Yes. And they're, er they're in the afternoon because of uh, Europe. Um, so yeah. that is a nice way to like kick your feet up and get started and look at some outfits. Love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be so good. I'm super excited about that. Um, and then, uh, August 1st, we're knitting emotional support chickens. Yes, we are. So I also, uh, downloaded that pattern. Have you looked at that pattern, my friend? No. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I'm excited because it's, um, um, DIY. It's homemade. It's very <laughs> God. It's, no, I, it's not an aesthetic. Not about them or planning it's at not. All. It's it. certainly a, a graphic designer has been nowhere near that pattern. However, the information does make sense. Um, so it's. I downloaded it and was l o l o l o l ing. Um, and uh, the, just this is the knitting one. Um. But it's going to be hilarious. So real excited for that, too. Um, and uh, real excited to uh, have everyone's reaction to when they download the pattern. <laughs> but it oh, makes sense. Jesus. It's just not, you know, we're used to a certain standard of gorgeousness when it comes to pattern design, speaking of Andrew and Mallory. So uh, it's rustic. It's very barnyard. Uh, but it'll get the job done. It'll exactly. get the job done. Yeah. Oh, good. You know, uh, every once in a while, you have to be reminded of your roots. And your roots yeah. really come from the fact that people used to do knitting patterns on Word documents and then upload them onto Ravelry. Yeah. Uh, and you just had that Word document. So we all can take it down a notch. Um, For sure. And just knit this goddamn chicken. Okay? It will get the job done, but it uh, just, you know. Brace yourself and just know I'm laughing right along with you. Oh yeah, Amy, just look at an Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We all She's can like, make everything look pretty in Canva now, but they didn't yes, have that back then. They didn't. And yeah, Elizabeth Zimmerman to me is like the original um, recipe blogger too. Like her pat, she'll like stop in the middle of pattern to be like, you know, when people come into the shop, a lot of times they're talking about this, and sometimes, and you know, it's most most of the time. 200 stitches. I just tell people 200 stitches. It usually works out. Anyway, then you kind of move on and you're like, I can see why people wanted to come see you and like hang, but um, I want to get, get through this. Let's get the info. Let's get the info. Yeah. You want that mm -hmm. button to click to recipe, jump to recipe. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Let's move this along. Uh, but not to worry for sticker of the month folks. Um, we have uh, ditched sticker, sticker mule and are now with sticker giant. Um, but our August sticker is emotional support chicken, chicken theme. So get excited for that debut. It's coming. It's on its way. Um, and it's wow. very silly. So. Oh my God. I'm very excited. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, if you knit a chicken, uh, you get a sticker. All right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that it. is how that is how that works too. Um, and while Laura is uh, sharing the link in the chat for our live crew, um, reminding Claire how to sign up for sticker of the month, um, I would like to just talk about the definition of chicken. Um, <laughs> we've, right. We have had a special request um, that chicken be relative. Um, so, so chicken's going to be relative in this case. If you need an emotional support llama, if you need an emotional support donkey, if you need an emotional support cheap, we, you are going to get to knit whatever emotional support item, uh, you would like, and that's going to count too. It doesn't have to be the stupid chicken. 
Um, but I'm knitting the stupid chicken because uh, I love chickens and I really want this. Uh, and it needs a hat. I need the cape. I need the outfit. Um, so this is happening. Yeah. Um, uh, Sarah's got another Poppy the chicken uh, pattern in the chat as well. Um, so chicken is as chicken does. Uh, whatever you want to do to get yourself through uh, is what we're going to be doing in August. And we're all gearing up, of course, to pop off in mm -hmm. September when sleeve timber starts. And then we actually need sweaters for warmth. Right now, we yeah. don't. We need chickens for emotional support. We need yeah. socks because we to touch our skin. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what we're doing for the next couple of months. I'm pumped about it. Uh, the Laura, I am reminded, see, why do I keep doing this? I didn't look at that goddamn um, uh, uh, quilted jacket, oh, heirloom yeah. quilt cardigan pattern. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fun, let's do it. And then I was like, oh shit, I have to knit 32 squares. Well, we don't have to do that. And I really believe in this group. Like, again, I really feel after on first glance, the, the data is there. This is not a garment. So we're not going to really concern ourselves with gauge and we're just going to kind of throw ourselves into it. So I think even though people love our expert guidance, I think it's going to be a true knit along of just hilarious check ins about where we are. When this when the thing is flat, it looks insane. It's so funny. I think we'll just roll with it, but I you know, that. who knows? Who knows? Maybe yeah, we'll always have yourself. tips and tricks to share, but you'll, I believe in us. I believe in all yeah. of you watching. We'll get through it. Yep. Yep. I do too. It'll be good. Uh, so those are the things that are coming up for the party, um, in the next couple of months. So there, I'm going to go ahead and say this. There's something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I love it. Um, uh, and yes, Vest Fest is continuing to run through August. I posted the Sweater Club Knit, uh, knit Nights. Uh, sorry, I posted the uh, September Knit Nights. All the words are jumbling now. Um, in the party for the events, they kick off on that first Tuesday of September. Uh, so Vest Fest goes up until then. Get excited. So yeah, lots of content, lots going on. Yeah, so much content, so much content. Um, so Laura, you were saying that you have tons of yarn available for people. I do. Yeah, I am. I'm slowly posting here on the party D stash. Um, so more every day, and then the uh, Etsy shop spring resale. Lots of cool stuff over there. So uh, the more I post. The um, sales are okay. It's hard to sell yarn in the summer. Um, but the more I post, the more I hear from all of you that you want to resell with me, which I love, but I need to get some of this yarn out of my house so that I can help you with your yarn. So, you know, vicious cycle, but it's um, it's been really fun to kind of go through things, especially knowing what all the knit along stuff we have going on, trying to put stuff up that I think people can use for projects right away for your classes. So. It's uh, it's good time. It's very curated, everyone. So get excited. And then we're going to have some um, pre-made garments, sewn and knitted garments coming up um, as the fall approaches. So pretty exciting. Pretty exciting stuff. Nice. Nice. Um, awesome. Um, all right. Well, we're skipping around uh, today a little bit, Laura. We didn't talk about, uh, you actually have some sweaters that you're knitting. Uh, I do. Uh, yeah. It's not just like in a holding pattern, just knitting socks like me, waiting for things to pop off. No, I've I've really d d like gotten back into gotten back into my knitting. So I'm teaching two classes right now. One of which I'm teaching with you. I'm teaching the Louise pullover, but in my case, I'm making it a cardigan. So that's the bobble sweater. Um, Allison made that gorgeous um cory uh sorry i always say it wrong confetti just the confetti. just confetti yep just the confetti, gorgeous yeah. confetti yarn um louise with ultra bobbles um i'm going with dainty bobbles and using germantown and we're teaching it two ways we're teaching it two ways so it's been really fun um we've worked on our spreadsheet in class this week um and i'm slowly moving on that uh, because I'm still, I'm the class is now catching up to me, so now I need to work ahead. 
Um, and then I'm finishing up. I'm literally about to sew the uh, ribbing my, for the split hem on my porcelain. So now I have my porcelain ready for sleeve timber, which is really exciting. So it's looking, exciting. thank goodness for daylight. Cause yeah, it doesn't do it justice. Um, Zoom does not do it justice, it's but so this is a really, good. really beautiful sweater. So this is exciting. Um, and really helpful actually with thinking about my Orla vest because the bod here is a is just my trusty 11 inches like that is what's going on and do you know how long that pattern wants that orla vest to be be 16 inches i'm like i could never i could never i mean my god like that's so incredibly long so that's where i'm like yeah i'm like from a very generous armhole depth i'm like no thank you so um you know, good to good to get in touch with with my crop. You know, I haven't. I'd like things. Uh, I've been taking my crop down over the past couple of years, uh, but not that far. So that's that's yeah, crazy. That's a tabard. And He's then right. that's a tabard. you know, I'll probably have to give up on this again and put it back in the bag for another year. But. Um, my friends at Friday tea class. We had a very intense Friday tea class last night and everybody did great. Nobody cried uh, where we put all of the, um, we worked on short rows together and it's a very intense process, but then you get to look like a tiny sailor lad uh, when it's all done. So I That's do so cute. love my second Friday tea, but I have bitched a lot about, this is the yarn that it's written for, the Sunday yarn. Um, from Sandus Garn, and it is lace weight. I mean, it is so thin, it's like not even funny. Um, beautiful squishy fabric, but like, yeah, I've got about two more strikes in me before she just goes back to sleep, but it is beautiful. So, so this, is, beautiful. this is happening, but like realistically, looking at this other pile of stuff that's not on two and a half, it, I think we know, we think we know where my loyalty is gonna lie. So that's, yeah, that's on the needles. That's what's going on on the needles. Pretty crazy. Nice. Nice. Yeah. The piles are, pi the projects are piling. The projects are piling. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And that's okay. Like, you know, people are always, uh, people like to ask us the, like, how long does it take you to knit something? Um, how many projects do you have on the needles? Like, what's a realistic, like, how much do you think you knit in a year? That kind of thing. And honestly, I've learned, I can't track all, I can't keep track of all that because Professionally, you have to go to bed one night and wake up in the morning and create a work group, you know, and now all of a sudden you're working on a framed, you know, uh, like, uh, and then you can't be working on, a, you know, that's what you got to work on now. And so even if you were mid sweater, you'd have to put that down and go work on your thing. So there's a there's certain amount of flexibility we have to have in our making life, um, which is why then I come back to my porcelain, you know, a year later. But it's okay. So, but I can't tell you how long things take because I'm a fast knitter, but I have to break it up in all these little increments. So I don't, who can tell? Who can tell? Who can so. tell? No. Yeah. Impossible. Plus, uh, I'm with Claire. Never do the math. No. Uh, never it will math. never be uh, cost effective, but I do it because I enjoy it. So that's, that's yes. where it is. So I'm always like, no, no, uh, I don't. Um, I don't really answer those questions. Uh, it's uh, it doesn't really matter either the answer because if you're trying to use me to gauge how long it would take you, that makes no sense. So yeah, I always try so to add up mean. the hours. So I I try to think about like the actual working hours um, instead of like three months um, because th yeah, one person's three months is going to look a lot different than another person's three months. Uh, like what you're saying, Laura. So I kind of mm -hmm. think about like, oh, if you like really dig into this and work on it, like a movie's worth a right. day, you know. Which is why I, pr I mean, really, um, Party Olympics is really when my when I started, like the Olympics is really when I started thinking about my knitting in terms of like week increments, because that's when I learned during the Beijing Olympics that I could knit a sweater during the Olympics. Now, didn't have a lot going on um, outside of that and was really just on the couch uh, making a sweater. But, you know, it was possible. I don't know that uh, I was much younger then um, and uh, would probably need to take more breaks for my, uh, to make my physical therapist happy, but 
Yeah. But yeah, you know, that was when I really started thinking about it in terms of like episodes or increments of time. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. 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 Good. Um, well, I love seeing all these projects. I yeah. also, and you know, in Chicago today, it's like 73 degrees. It's so nice. Yeah. Crisp 73. It really makes you uh, want to surround yourself with yarn and start a million new projects. It will be 90 probably in two days again. And then we'll, yes. we'll, we'll forget all about this. Um, but right now you're kind of like, oh shit let's clear the schedule let's just uh knit on some let's just knit let's just knit on some shit and drink no whiskey. kidding no yeah. kidding so uh love it yeah yeah love it um all right anything else uh business businessy uh i think that'll talk about um just one final plug for stitch works um speaking of best fest i do have an in-person best class starting on wednesday evenings starting in August. Um, and it, so if you are in the Chicago land area and you would like seek help, um, you, or you want to knit your Orla along with me, um, or you have a vest in your heart, but want some expert guidance, any vest pattern is available in this class. So, and then there'll be a seek demo with machines owned by the store, um, that we will do a sewn seek demo there. So it's uh, really a great way if you want, uh, like you have a best challenge that you want to have some supervision with, it's a great way to do it. So I'm really hoping to see a couple of our people in that class. If you are missing in-person hangs, um, that's a great way to do it. So best fest, always best fest in my heart. And that class will continue through, through September. So there you go. That's all I got nice. for real. Uh, well, speaking of in-person though, uh, we did put up our fall sweater club dates. We did. Um, it was a soft launch. Um, yes. uh, but we are going to be back at small gathering, the same place that we were for our summer sweater club dates. Uh, instead of Sunday mornings, we're going to be doing Monday evenings, uh, Monday evenings, uh, starting in September. Uh, so if you need more in-person help, uh, and are more city bound, uh, than Northern suburb bound, um, take a look at us. That is at lauraelson.com. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then we then really, I think our business, yeah, we've done it. We've done the business. We did it. Perfect. That sounds great. Uh, Uh, well, I haven't been watching anything except sports. Okay. Well, uh, bye everyone. Uh, no, but you've been watching a lot of soccer and baseball, right? Those are the two. Yes. Yeah. We got into the Euro cup, um, and we got into Copa, uh, America as well. Uh, so we would do that. Shane's big into cricket. Uh, so you're watching some test pitch cricket, uh, too. Uh, there has been sports on sports on sports. Um, and then, uh, a baseball is always on in my house. Um, so there doesn't leave a whole lot of time for other things. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, I have really just been sporting, which doesn't make for great, um, content for, uh, cult, for culture corner. Well, that's all right. Um, yeah, I have been spending, uh, too much time on TikTok, which also doesn't make great content for culture corner because you don't care about the drama of all these little TikTokers, um, even though it is very compelling. Um, the Brooke Schofield, Clinton Kane, oh my gosh, everyone. I didn't know who these people were, and now I do, and now I have opinions about them, but that's not that's not great. Um, I We lost a lot of, uh, a whole handful of celebrities um, recently, which was really sad, including um, Shelly Duvall, and my um, face was reacting to the yeah. chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lisa yeah. just said she got sucked into the bachelorette, uh, which we thought, which uh, we thought was going to happen. Um, so, uh, but yes, lots of people died. Yeah. So, um, but uh, that was all overshadowed, much like being overshadowed by the bachelorette, overshadowed by the whole thing going on with Trump. Um, but uh, one of the things that I, that I thought was really interesting to, to sort of relate it to TikTok. There was a woman that ran this like Shelly Duvall fan account um, for that started as a Twitter account and then became a TikTok account. And this woman also lived in Texas and Shelly Duvall reached out to her and she went and saw her 
And Shelley Duvall like, had a tough last two decades of her life health-wise, um, both physical and mental health-wise. And But she was uh, done really dirty by fucking Dr. Phil. And um, they had her on for an interview that was like really exploitative and didn't offer her actual any help, just sort of was like, look, look at her now. And it was a lot of like before and after pictures and stuff. And it was really, really gross. And this woman did so much to like, and, like struck up a friendship with Shelly. They would meet out for lunch like once a week and she would check in on her. And she did such a lovely job of like um, just checking in on Shelly and, and to introducing Gen Z into her whole body of work and uh, just like really took her legacy and like built it up. So I watching, uh, having her speak about Shelly after she passed and um, share different parts of Shelly's life was just really, really cool. So Shelly Duval archive on any social media, really worth checking out the young lady that runs it. It's like top notch. So I thought that was a cool little internet thing. Um, and then people in the chat are re recommending some Olympic adjacent things in the run up to party Olympics. And I wanted to second, yes. Sarah has a, a, a rec for the documentary Sprint on Netflix. Super good and lays out a lot of the stakes for um, track and field coming into the Olympics. So that was like really uh, compelling. It's, it's a good, it gives me that Olympic like hit um, without it being the Olympics yet. So Sprint was very excellent. Um, and Leanne yeah, is saying that there's a new Simone Bynes. Yeah. Have you, have you, you, no, you haven't watched it yet. No, either. I haven't Me watched neither. it, but it pops up when I go on, um, on, uh, Netflix. Um, but it's a lot of her husband. Yeah. Uh, Not oh my, my favorite. Yeah, Famously on sure. this show, we have, we have discussed that. Um, but he is wearing the requisite t-shirts and going to the events and clapping politely. So I suppose that is all we can ask of him. But I um, very much, uh, she seems uh, in a much better headspace. So yeah. I'm really hoping this is uh, just a triumphant Olympics for her well, and that she has she's 10, feeling good. He has 10,000 crystals sewn onto her fit. So mm -hmm. she's got to feel like a million bucks. Um, Leanne says it, yeah. it's, it, you can't ignore the husband. Um, well, we're so doing a great job of it now. We're certainly not saying his name. Um, oh, and yeah, and uh, we're doing, we're giving him the right amount of attention, which is to say none, um, because this is Simone season, the goat. We are ready. Um, and I will be, I will definitely be watching that this weekend. I hope Royal is excited to cheer her on. He will be. He loves sports. Yeah, he loves sports. He knows high five, Laura. Oh, um, good. Yeah. So Very he, good. Yeah, that's one of his, his favorite things to do is give Perfect. a high five. Right. So, um, I did read a book, um, that I really liked that was about the Olympics. Um, also yes. clearing up to the Olympics. Yeah, I've been very sports focused. Um, the book was called The Other Olympians, um, and it was all about kind of the origins of a gender testing, like sex testing in the Olympics, uh, specifically women's track and field, and how the Nazis, surprise, surprise, uh, came in and just ruined everything. Uh, no surprise there, but it was right before the um, 36 Berlin Olympics um, that there were two uh, transgender men um who previous to their gender um uh affirmation surgeries uh, uh were in women's track and field mm -hmm. and uh and the nazis just like latched on to their stories and and like uh, sh uh shared all this just like insane misinformation about how men were coming in disguise and stealing women's trophies and medals and uh that had literally never happened before but it was a it's a really interesting book all about like the history of women's sports and how women's sports got introduced into the olympic um into the olympics in the 30s um and then the the like blatant Nazi takeover um, and what that did um, to uh, sports uh, over for the next like 40 years uh, after uh, World War II. 
Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting about the book um, that I was very surprised about was how chill everyone except the Nazis were about gender um, affirming surgeries um, and kind of what that looked like um, in the 30s uh, and um, kind of the kind of what was going on at the time to talk to people who were struggling with their gender identities. Um, very, very fascinating. Uh, mm. Very fascinating. Great book. I just blew through uh, this book. Um, so yeah, it's called The Other Olympians. Um, it's written by just like a little baby. Uh, his name is Michael Waters. Um, he, there's a thing, I was, you know, I don't know, you just figure somebody old would be interested right. in. A what, you have the author stereotype. Eight. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Author stereotype, just like an old person would be like super into uh, researching uh, old Olympics. Um, you know, old like us, Laura. Yeah, um, right. but it was like this little like 27 year old baby uh it's his first book um it, it's super awesome. well researched just really well um it's uh just really well narrated uh he knows what's interesting about the stories which is really good which is kind of hard sometimes with books like that they get you know heavily data driven um mm -hmm. but the the young man can uh can spin a tail so so if you're looking awesome. if you're interested in that uh we've lost like six people uh live uh so maybe <laughs> you're not interested in this uh but uh but if you are um it's it, it's a super good book um and uh it's so interesting to hear different stories about the Olympics uh, because, you know, the Jesse Owens story and, um, you know, just like not how crazy it was that the, how the Nazis were controlling all the narratives and everything. And then uh, that the boys on the boat um, mm -hmm. came, uh, was about the same Olympics. So there's, there's a lot of shenanigans going on with that 36 Olympics. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Conservative movements set cultures back um, by decades. It's just in. There you go. Yeah. So, well, yowza. Well, that sounds yeah. awesome um, as a, a informative and well-researched, and it sounds like at least one person is in for reading, reading it. Me and you, Sarah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, well, good. I'm excited to stop reading about the Olympics and start watching the Olympics. Same. We are going to have a lot of hot takes. Mm -hmm. I am sure. Is there's always some shit going on with somebody's dad or whatever. Um, For sure. uh, uh, so yeah, that you're, that's going to be coming at you. Uh, uh, starting, starting next yes. week. I can't wait. And not everybody is a shot. And contrary, if you made it this far, you're not one of these people, but not everybody is a sports person or an Olympics person. Um, and, but there is still something for you over at the party because you're going to see so much knitting coming your way. You're going to see so much, so many whips, so many cool, creative, like it's like inspirational projects. You're going to see chickens, all kinds of crap. So you you uh, can get excited to watch all the content being created and all the inspiration yeah. that's coming, even if you're not tuned in with the rest of us. You can enjoy yeah. our works in progress. Our hot so, and our hot for takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. All it takes to get somebody interested in something is a well-told tale. Mm -hmm. um so yeah so there's a lot of well-told tales about to happen i am sure so, absolutely it's all about the narrative out. that's all the olympics yep. are so yep yep exactly exactly um all right uh anything else you can think of miss laura i think that'll do it we we get made it to our hour you know like riding a bike just right back right back into it yeah. Um, so uh, we are going to take one more week off. I promise next week we will not be live uh, because it is Laura's birthday and she's going on a birthday trip. Um, but then we are going to be back in August uh, and we are going to be live every Thursday at noon in August. Uh, so get used to us. Get yeah. used to us. We'll be back. Uh, really we'll be get back. used to us because we're going to be doing a lot of shit uh, in August and September. So yeah. You won't be Love able it. to miss us. So. Love it. <laughs>
There you, you won't. Go. No, you won't. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks Thank so much for helping us get back into the swing of things around here. Great to see you. Uh, thanks for being so active in the chat. Um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, dust off your uh, your yarn closets, your yarn rooms, your yep. stash rooms. Dig start around shopping. for all the all the yarns. Yeah, start shopping spring resale. Look in that D stash because uh, we got a lot of shit coming up. All right. That's right. Uh, all right, everybody. Thanks again. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.